Hello teacher. Hello students. My name is Bruka Baina. I would like to welcome you to the first day of your economics plasma television lesson. I am sure this and the upcoming plasma television lessons will lay the foundation that will be useful in your future education, career and personal life. I hope you'll also enjoy the lessons and learn a lot from them. Today's lesson is on the agricultural sector of the Ethiopian economy. In today's lesson, we will discuss the main features of the agricultural sector, recent developments in the sector, and the challenges that adversely affect its development. The Ethiopian economy experienced changes from market-oriented to centrally planned economy after the 1974 revolution. Since 1991 and 92, the current government introduced a market-oriented economic system. The economic reforms made by the current government has facilitated significant sectoral growth performances. Students, do you know why agriculture is said to be the backbone of the Ethiopian economy? Agriculture is said to be the backbone of the Ethiopian economy because it plays a leading role in the Ethiopian economy. The economic well-being of the people as well as the performances of the other sectors such as manufacturing and transportation subsectors heavily depend on the performance of the agricultural sector. Students, let's discuss the main features of the agricultural sector. The agricultural sector contributed about 41.6% to the national output or GDP in 2009-10, generated more than 80% of the total export earnings, employed about 85% of the labor force, supplied about 70% of raw materials to the secondary activities. The agricultural sector can be broadly divided into four subsectors, among which crop production and livestock production are the dominant subsectors. Crop production includes food crops, cash crops, fruits and vegetables. Livestock production includes raising of meat and dairy cattle, sheep, goats, camels, poultry, and others. Compared to the livestock production, crop production has the largest share in the agricultural sector in terms of its contribution to GDP and export earnings. The remaining two subsectors are fishery and forestry. The main crops can be categorized into four groups cereals, pulses, oilseeds, and cash and industrial crops. Let me give you examples of crops for each group. Cereals include tef, maize, barley, wheat, sorghum, and millet. Pulses include horse bean, lentils, etc. Oil seeds include flax, rapeseed, and soybeans. Cash and industrial crops include coffee, oil seeds, pulses, cotton, etc. Students, we hope you now have some idea about the main features of the agricultural sector. Now, it is time to do the first activity. Explain how a good performance of the agricultural sector can create market 
to the manufacturing sector. Check your answers against the answers you see on the screen. Put simply, improved performance of agriculture leads to an increase in income of farmers. As a result, they increase their demand for manufactured consumption goods as well as farm inputs. The increased domestic demand creates favorable market opportunity for the manufacturing sector to expand its output. Students, I hope you've got the correct answer. The agricultural sector has been performing better since the past eight years. The improved performance of the sector can be attributed to the development achieved recently. Some of the recent developments in the agricultural sector include Consistent increase in both production and productivity of crop production. Diversification of agricultural production. Establishment of agricultural marketing system. Development of research and extension services. Improvement in supply of agricultural inputs. Expansion of small and medium scale irrigation. Better management of natural resources to sustaining the increase in productivity and production. Well, students, it is now time for the second activity. Did you know the difference between agricultural production and agricultural productivity or yield? Discuss this in pairs, that is, with the student sitting next to you. I want you to support your answer with appropriate examples.
students, I hope you've answered the question. Here is the answer. Please check against your answers. Production is a measure of the volume of the total output produced. Example, 1.2 million tons of coffee. Productivity or yield, on the other hand, is the amount of output produced per unit of input. Example, 10 quintals of if per hectare of land. The last point of discussion in our today's lesson is the problems of the agricultural sector. Let us see some of the major problems in the agricultural sector. There are a number of problems facing the agricultural sector. Major problems of the sector include frequent drought because the farming system is highly traditional and heavily dependent on rain. Lack of enough rain causes significant decline in production. The second agricultural sector problem would be soil degradation. Soil erosion that is caused by overgrazing and overpopulation, among other reasons, leads to rapid loss of soil nutrients, poor soil fertility, and this results in poor productivity. Land fragmentation. The rapid growth rate of rural population causes a declining land holding per household. Such fragmented land holding is a major constraint for modern farming and contributes lower per capita production. Backward agricultural practices. Backward and highly traditional farming system is the main reason for poor farm management, inefficient farming, and results in low productivity. These are not the only problems facing the agricultural sector. There are two other challenges related to the market. These are poor marketing facilities due to poor road networks. Limited access to market implies lower product prices and disincentive for farmers, which in turn discourages production. Increasing prices of agricultural inputs. The increase in the prices of agricultural inputs is yet another big challenge the agricultural sector is facing. Students, now be ready for the last activity. Explain how the increase in the prices of inputs negatively affects the performance of the sector.
Ceteris paribus, increased prices of agricultural inputs, such as fertilizer, makes farmers demand less amounts of these inputs. This in turn leads to inadequate rate of use of fertilizer per hectare. Consequently, the expected farm productivity is lower, and this results in lower production. Students, let me remind you the main topics of our today's lesson. Watch carefully as I do that for you. In our today's lesson, we have seen the following three important aspects of the agricultural sector. These are the main features of the sector, the recent developments in the sector, and the major problems facing the sector. In the next lesson, we will discuss the industrial sector of our economy. Well, students, this is all we have time for. See you next time in another program. Until then, it is goodbye from me. Goodbye.